This is the EM10 camera. There we are. The entry level camera into the OMD system. Olympus have allowed me to try for a short while the Mark IV version of this particular range. Now, my review is going to be on the lines of an experience. If you're looking for something more technical, then look elsewhere. I am going to approach or try to approach using this camera from the status of a beginner. There are many features, but I will dwell on just three, and they are metering, video, and focus stacking, which I've used for the very first time and find it very interesting. This is my first shot. Who said you can't have differential focusing with micro four thirds? After overnight rain, I set forth on my first photo shoot to Ashdown Forest in East Sussex, alighting at Coleman's Hatch. I am using the basic camera and kit lens and nothing else, and saving to RAW so that I can process the images myself in Adobe Lightroom. This was particularly important at the start of the shoot. I am now walking through dense woodland illuminated by streaks of piercing sunlight that can so easily overexpose if not controlled. I spot meter highlights, correcting underexposed areas in post-production. Here are the before and after shots, plus another with a bit of drama. This is the beauty of carrying out processing in Lightroom. I can change my mind without reducing the quality of the image, and even backtrack when things go wrong. Upon reaching open heathland, I stopped to admire and photograph the extensive views northwards towards East Grinstead, made exceptionally clear by the previous day's rain. Here is the perspective difference between wide angle and telephoto, using the 14-42 to lens from the same spot. Back in woodland, the trees attracted my eye, and close to the footpath I found a particularly good specimen, at least to my uneducated eye, of, I think, the common spotted orchid. The closest focusing point for the 14 to 42 lens is 20 centimeters that is just under 8 inches in old money but getting in close at full telephoto which reduces depth of field i used aperture priority at f8 to increase depth of field sufficiently to maintain sharpness over the whole orchid but not the background now that is a craft. After passing the forest centre, I descended from the heights of the ridge via Broadstone Warren. Here I received further opportunities to test the dynamic range of the EM-10 Mark IV. The Surrey village of Godstone, better known as Junction 6 on the M25, incidentally, was hosting a fair on its green a tempting subject for video, so down I trotted. I had found that fast-moving subjects confuse the autofocus, causing the focus to go in and out. Maybe I incorrectly set the camera, but with the EM-10 Mark IV, there was no such problem. Yeah. 
I was tempted to take a ride, but chickened out. This perhaps is more my cup of tea, or should I say coffee? The EM10 accepts most Zuiko lenses, and Olympus also supplied one of their pro lenses, the 12-45 f4 constant aperture lens, widening the zoom ratio, particularly at wide angle. It also allowed me to use the focus bracketing facility on this latest EM10. However, I first experimented with depth of field, controlling it traditionally by aperture selection here f8, which keeps the leaf nicely in focus whilst the background becomes unsharp the further it gets away from the subject. The EM10 Mark IV has focus bracketing, a viable alternative if depth of field is not your thing. It is easy to use and there are two distance settings. It takes eight images and the camera can be handheld. I executed post-production in Olympus Workspace, which is easy to use. Whilst images can be saved to RAW initially, the exported combined file is restricted to JPEG or TIFF. Individual images can be deselected. You don't have to use all eight. Here are the various stages of Olympus Workspace post-production using all eight images. I use the 12 to 45 Pro lens, but not all Olympus Zuiko lenses support focus bracketing. The value of focus bracketing is easy to appreciate, particularly for macro, where depth of field is severely restricted. For more general work, I will probably resort to traditional methods where I have more control, especially when the output can be kept at RAW and I can continue to process in that format. It is difficult to break with old habits. I've enjoyed using this camera. I already have the Mark II version of this particular model and the quality of images I can achieve from that camera are good enough for reproduction in quality books and magazines. My usual workhorse is of course the EM1 with the 12 to 100 Pro lens. But these days, weighed down by the bus pass, taking that camera across 15 miles of mountain and moorland is getting a little bit trying. Now, that scenario is where this camera is absolutely invaluable. Maybe when I reach my 80s, I will succumb to the pen, but I will certainly draw the line before the smartphone. Therefore, I think the use of this camera, which I've enjoyed very much, I think it is ideal for quality photography for those of you who are beginners and on a budget. Now this must be the ultimate in vanity. The Mark IV of the EM10 has a screen that flips down so you can do a selfie or a video like this. And the quality is so good that you can probably see that I need a shave.